Hello everyone, Nasunogami here and welcome back to Let's Play Hello Charlotte, Episode 2. Where I last left off, well, bullies ganged up on Charlotte and cut her hair, but I didn't fix it up. Except she looks a lot like Frey now. And also she had a little, um, sequence. It's like everything was psychedelic and everything turned into Temi speak. And now the trial is upon us. Can we just leave? No. This is it. Dear students and teachers, you're welcomed um, to the annual school trial. Please bring out your mobile phones. We shall begin voting now. Henri peeks over my shoulder, waiting for me to make a decision. What should I do, Seth? I promised C not to vote for him. But I want to save him. I, too, promised Henri to vote for her. We're best friends, after all. What should I do? And looks like we're gonna have three endings here. Yeah, we did make two promises. Or we can take a third option and do nothing. When it comes to voting, that's typically a bad idea. But... <sighs> My gut instinct, I want to vote for C. I mean, he's got a lot to live for still, and, well, with Charlotte, I don't think she's going to have much time anyways, well, with the, the Oracle killing her, but I want to give C a chance at life. Plus, well, I don't really care for Henri anyways. It's decided. I choose C's name from the list. So it's pretty much obvious you can't vote for yourself. Henri looks at me in shock and disbelief. Why, Charlie? Why'd you choose him? Didn't we make a promise? I, I'm sorry, but he doesn't have anyone to vote for him. How could you? You traitor! I trusted you. Attention, please. Everyone, finish voting now. We will now count the votes. Please wait for a moment. Three. Two. One. And... The one who will amount to nothing, the most useless of all, the one with zero votes is... Well... Man, you're so harsh. Charlotte Wiltshire! The audience explodes. Serves her right! Why am I not surprised? I look at Henri. Serves you right, you traitor. Why do you even look so surprised? You gave your voice to, the, to your crush, yet you're devastated that I didn't give my voice to you? Look, even that loser didn't want to vote for you. How does that feel? Well... Huh. But why, Henri? Why, she asked. Even though I've done so much for you, you never appreciated me. No one wants to be friends with a lunatic like you. You know, I honestly try to be your friend, but I give up. Henri, what is... I don't understand. Um, hello. I'm the one who bought you lunch. What, like one, two times when you had no money? It's me who doesn't understand you no matter how hard I try. You know, I'm tired of playing along. When will you get tired of lying? But I never really lied to you. I just wanted to. Do you really think puppeteers and aliens and all that bullshit exists? You honestly believe your classmate was a god. You really are a perfect match for each other. Mad cats, oracles, pythias, observers, omnicubes and whatever. Every day you kept making up a new lie. I'm tired. So tired of keeping up with it. Uh, so all of that is, uh, in Charlotte's head. But apparently the trial is not. So everybody's kind of living in a dystopian world anyways. 
but wait, if I'm the cubes are part of Charlotte's um delusions, then uh hallucinations. Then what about the trial saying that you'll erase their uh, soul cube data? What happens in reality? Everyone in the class tried teaching you a lesson, but no matter what we do, you never get a clue. What lesson? I'm afraid I don't understand. I don't understand. My bag thrown away, books scattered on the ground, dead bodies in the garden, a fake letter, everything, everything, every single little thing. It all started to fall into place. It seems she's so happy she can't believe her luck. You're not helping. So, Henri, you don't try being a friend by bullying. Now, now, chatting with friends can wait. If you'd be so kind, please proceed to the smile room. We're all awaiting your glorious transformation. Let's go, Seth. Everyone's waiting. I look at Henri for the last time. Go die! Henri doesn't care anymore. You're crying. Don't look at me. Go die already. I'm sorry I couldn't be a good friend. It's all my fault it came to this. It's a pretty smile room. Everyone in the hall is laughing. Oh, I see, uh, see there. Just die, Wiltshire, you weirdo. About time you got your brains fixed. I pass by C. He looks lost, devastated, so very small and human. Yeah, if he'd there, he didn't vote for Charlotte. Can't vote for yourself, so... I guess he decided not to vote. His words are barely audible in this noise. I... I'm sorry. I give him my widest smile. I'm so glad, C. I'm so glad I'll be the one to save you. He looks at me in shock. The guards push me further. And the next moment he disappears into the raging crowd. It must be the last time we see each other. I think to myself. You know, see, when we first met, I saw myself in you. It's sad I won't be here to hear more of your stories. I was really fond of them. I wonder if we'll meet again somewhere. What guards? Smile room, huh? Ugh. Medical workers strap me to the chair. They're not there. It becomes hard to keep my consciousness with every second. Like they're gonna lobotomize her or, or subject her to images via clockwork orange. I cough. It's ink all over again. Bilious melancholy that consumed me all this time. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. I don't want to die. I don't want my body to become an empty shell. I feel someone hold my hand. It's Frey. Well, looks like it's the end. Now you're going to become a corpse too, Miss Wilshire. <laughs> You've lost it too. Frey, you're... I've been a walking corpse for a long time. It was you who kept me alive. I cannot leave your side, and I never will. I'll be with you till the very end, until we completely decay. We're both miserable, aren't we? Frey laughs bitterly. Come here. I won't let them have their way with your body and mind. I reach out and embrace the dead god. Former Oracle melts into my arms, becoming a mass of organs and broken machinery. Meaningless, useless parts. Garbage of the mind. I'm no longer breathing. The dead god leans in, kissing me goodbye. Good night, my princess. Now we can finally rest. So I sunk deeper into oblivion, a fragment of memory comes into mind. The Ink Princess wasn't kept in Paper Prison for long. The Paper Princess befriended the Ink Princess, and they became dearest of friends. 
Thus, the Ink Princess became the happiest person in the world. That is my ending for this story. Isn't it too cliche? How about Paper Princess dying from intoxication after touching the Ink Princess? Or Paper Princess turn using Ink Princess for ink production until it drains her completely? That's even more cliche! Huh, <laughs> what you suggest? A sugar-coated fantasy? Not every story has to have a cruel ending. I want Ink Princess to be happy. Even if she's the plague itself? A parasite? Even so. Even if she doesn't deserve it? Even so! It's not her fault that she was born this way. That's just how she is. Somewhere far away, the door to the smile room has opened. Somewhere far away, a lump of meat lay there, devoid of a soul. Somewhere far away, a false god wept over a mere disposable vessel. That's right. In the embrace of a dead god, I'll eternally rest among stars. Rejoice, Seth. This is my happy ending. Black End. Uh, Charlotte dies. Becomes soulless. Alright. Let's move on to the next ending. I'm uh, gonna vote for you, Henri. Bitch as you may be. I hope your decision is the right one, Seth. This way, I'll fulfill my promises to both C and Henri. I give my vote to Henri. Henri looks at me in surprise. You actually voted for me? We made a promise, didn't we? Ah, uh, right. We did. We sure did. Oh, that smile. Look, Henri's voting for you too. Henri chooses my name in the list. Attention, please. Everyone, stop voting now. We will now count the votes. Please wait for a moment. Three, two, one. And the one who will amount to nothing, the most useless of all, the one with zero votes is Vincent Wordsworth. Not only has he never socialized, he didn't even attend class. Oh, that's not true at all. I mean, he attended class. That's a lie. C lost all points because he ran away from the house. That too. Such a worthless being can never become useful to society. He sets into a amount to nothing. Therefore, his soul data is corrupted. Am I right, everyone? The audience roars with a yes. This trial is just too cruel. What a loser. It's all because I've abandoned him. Everyone's clapping and laughing. Loser God! Loser God! It feels like a mass psychosis. That's exactly what it is! It shouldn't be like this. Henri touches my shoulder. She's smiling, just like everyone else. It serves him right. It's great we didn't get chosen, right? I don't know what to reply with. The guards start making their way to see. I see Umbrella Man among the crowd. His yellow eyes stand out among all. What a good day, isn't it? Umbrella Man! Your employer, he... Excuse me, what? The god of this world, he's... Oh... Are you talking about that gray-haired boy? <laughs> oh god, my stomach hurts from laughter. I expected nothing less from you, to be honest. Unfortunately, that boy is a perfectly human being, not special in any kind of way. I kind of had a feeling, too. But still, how is he able to open all doors, then? Unless he stole keys from the faculty room or something. Come on, take a good look at him. I call out to see. Vincent! He hears my voice and turns around. I stare at him, but stares back at me. It's the abyss itself. Then, for a brief moment, I finally see his face. Real face. The 
face of a small, scared boy. He disappears behind the doors. I feel my feet move forward on their own. Where are you going? I have to save him. Are you insane? Forget that loser. I saved him once. I'm now responsible for his life. No, you're not. You'll stay here with me. I'm sorry, Henri. I have to go. Wait! Henri grabs my swear. I won't let you go. People don't return from the smile room. You'll stay here, where you belong. With me. You sundere. I break free from her grip. I'll be back in a moment, alright? Forgot I could shift to run. You're not a loser, God, see? I think you're wonderful. You're wonderful exactly because you're flawed. Because it makes you so very human. We're flawed. We're born to make errors. We hurt each other because we are essentially egotistic. That's why I want to know you better. All of this is so sad. See, he's laying on the table with his eyes open. Vincent! I'm so glad you're safe. Thank God. Wait, Miss Wiltshire. Something's off. Eh! There's no data on this vessel. There's no soul inside. What are you saying, Frey? Vincent is breathing! He's right here! What I'm saying is that it's a lump of meat lying on the table. It's not a person. It can't be. No way. You're lying. I do not tell lies, Miss Wiltshire. We were too late. I feel the ink rise in my throat. Everything begins to collapse. Charlotte! It's not fair. Not fair. Not fair. Not fair. Why has it come to this? Such a ruthless world. Such a cruel world. Such a world shouldn't exist at all. She's turning into a witch. I will consume everyone. Have them sleep peacefully inside my belly. No one will ever hurt anyone. And no one will get hurt. Because no one will feel anything. Humanity will ascend to a new level. Evolve into something greater. And it's instrumentality at the same time. So I rose above all cities and countries. And ate. And ate and ate until my belly was full until it hurt so much it was hard to breathe I ate my classmates my parents my imaginary friends and the oracle itself I ate the lands and the buildings I ate junk food and concrete all together everyone was gone and my body eventually collapsed from the burden of consuming everything in sight became a black hole that sucked everything in, destroying it all. There was no one but me left, yet I was with everyone at the same time, for I became the world itself. Holding an empty shell of a false god, I cried. Oh, Charlotte. Liar. You liar. Vincent, you liar. You said your earthly shell would wither and you'd become a god again. Yet no matter where I look, I can't find you. I cried and cried and cried until my voice became hoarse. I'm sorry, everyone. I couldn't save anyone or anything. I'm sorry, Henri. You protected me. You got angry in my place. Yet... I thought only about myself. I'm sorry, Vincent. All this time, I wanted to be saved myself. So I saw salvation in you. I wanted you to become my hero. But it doesn't matter now. Now that's too tragic. Don't you think, my dear? You? Hello there. You're still alive? 
My dear, that's a harsh way to put it. Of course I am. The world you've consumed is like a particle in the vast universe. Then why are you here? I've come on my own accord. I clutch Vincent's body close to mine. Easy, easy. I'm not there to take him away. Instead, I've brought you something. Umbrella Man brings out an item he was carrying. It's a box. What is it? WHAT'S IN THE BOX?! What does it look like to you? A salt cube. Then, a cube it shall become. It's a copy of this boy's soul. It was rather hard to get. I'm afraid the original was destroyed, though. Souls have backup copies? Well, of course. Data backup is essential. You must have thought you were able to go back in time. When in reality, your soul cube copy was loaded into a new body every time you died. I never thought it was like this. Ah, so that's how it is. Every time I get Charlotte killed. Although you cannot bring this boy back to life. With a soul cube, he won't vanish from this world completely. So no matter what, I couldn't save him in the end. You still can have his can save his soul. If you open the cube, you'll release his soul data. You will become a stargazer and pass the purgatory stage. Who knows? Perhaps she'll want to stay with you afterwards. Anyhow, enough of the idle talk. Charlotte Wiltshire, you've consumed the energy of an entire world and an oracle and made it a part of you. You can convert the energy inside of you to create life from zero. When it runs out, all you have to do is consume more. In short, you've become a god. A binge eater at that. That is a fact. If you don't mind, may I ask what you, you plan to do now? I'm tired, Umbrella Man. I want to rest. Is that all? You know have the power to consume worlds. I never asked for it. Then, do you plan to leave this domain? I will remain here. I don't want to eat any more, Umbrella Man. Oh well. There are alternative versions of yourself who still struggle in countless parallel worlds. So are people you care about. Will you abandon them too? No. I want to look over them. I still want to protect everyone. Ugh. Turn into a witch. You started this mentality. And now you're gonna turn into God Monica. Umbrella Man. You know everything in this world. You exist outside of time. In past, present, and future alike. Would you help me watch over my world while I rest? Right now, it may seem hopeless, but perhaps there's a chance for a better ending. Is that an employment offer, Miss Wiltshire? Yes. I want to hire you. Would you accept? <laughs> my loyalty comes with a price, my dear. In return, you shall lose your name. The world will forget your human existence and your name shall be become an empty sound. Yep, just like God, Monica. Your alternative incarnation shall never learn about you, and your name will be erased from all soul archives. You will go by many names, but none of them will, will define you, for I will eat it. Would you pay this price? Yes, I accept, Umbrella Man. So fast. You really don't value yourself at all. A contract between a name eater and a world eater. How thrilling. <laughs> I suppose hiding my true nature is meaningless now. And after all, it was you who invented the concept of observers and puppeteers alike. Such things as episodes with me talking to your puppeteer were no more than visions of a delusional grade schooler. I laugh a little. It sounds a little hysterical. Have I said something funny, my dear? Then are you really a devil? No, it's just... You've always said that your employer cared about my well-being. Now that I realize who that was all along, I couldn't help myself. Oh, the irony. Am I right? You were the employer the whole time. The moment you hired me was destined to happen all along. By the way, Umbrella Man, that's how I called you since I was a child, right? Why, yes. I've grown accustomed to this distasteful nickname. Do you have a real name? I go by many names. People give them to me themselves. For example, you can call me Charles. The man laughs mischievously. I laugh with him. Now then, 
I shall give you some privacy. You still have things to do before your slumber, don't you? Just like that, Charles disappears. I look at the soul cube in my hands. It's small and gray. Fragile. I smile to myself. You know, Vincent, I never noticed how fragile you were. You fear germs, the people, and human life itself. So you've decided you didn't belong to this world. I wonder how it felt all this time. I was so fascinated with you that it made me ignorant. Although ignorance is a trait we share. It's time to let you go. I open the soul cube. Its contents disappear. See you later, Vincent. I take his body in my arms and get up from my knees. Everyone, Mad Cat, Felix, Aiden, Bennett, Florence, and Huxley, and many, many more walks behind me. As long as I exist, they won't disappear. After all, I've created them. We walk for a long time. In a field of ink and paper, meat and machinery, soap and bugs, the god of this world lies beside me. He will, too, wake up one day. Good night, Vincent. My eyelids become heavy. I know it'll be a dreamless sleep. I don't want to dream anymore. I finally close my eyes. And what about me? Seth! Rejoice, Seth. Faithful friend of mine. I became the god of my dollhouse world and will observe its people till the end of time. Charles will eat my name and will watch over me in every single timeline that exists. The world will forget my existence. But you won't. And that's the only thing that's important. Gray end. So, one ending left to go. So I gotta wander. So if... So if everything like soul cubes and aliens and all that... If they weren't real, then... What actually happened with Charlotte? At this point I got a question. To what extent are things real or not? Like... Trial is real. Whatever they do to people is real. Just... It's messing up my head a bit. So, we vote for C, we die. We vote for Henri. Yeah. Hey, uh, Charlotte becomes a uh, god Monica. Well, what happens if we do? Absolutely nothing. On the one hand, in general, it's bad to do nothing when it comes to voting. But at the same time, this whole thing is just messed up. And probably a good idea not to be a part of it. It's decided. I'll withdraw from voting. Henri looks at me. So you really didn't choose anyone in the end? It's not true, Henri. I chose everyone. I don't want someone to suffer because of my choice. Sometimes making it not making a decision is the best decision, huh? What a dumb choice, really. Nothing less to expect of the school's infamous oddball. Henri, are you Attention please! Everyone finish voting now. We will now count the votes. Please wait for a moment. Three. Two. One. And the one with zero votes. The garbage of society this year is Oh! In fact, we have two people this year. Vincent Wordsworth and Charlotte Wiltshire. Rejoice, you both. The guards will escort you to the smile room. Everyone around is clapping and yelling. It feels like mass psychosis. Good riddance. Finally, you deserve each other. I look at Henri. Serves you right. Honestly, just go die already. For the sake of everyone. Henri. What? Please don't cry. Henri turns away from me, angrily rubbing her eyes with her long sleeves. I'll be okay, so take care of yourself, okay? I can still hear her sobs as I'm being led to the room. The operation will take no longer than a few minutes. Stay still. 
C finally looks at me from his operation table. So they are gonna like lobotomize him. I see horror in his eyes. He's shaking. Charlotte. Yes, there's something I want to tell you. I'm sorry. I'm not who you think I am. I lied to you all this time. About puppeteers and observers. About other worlds. It's just like everyone said. I'm a false god. A loser. A weakling. A coward. I don't know anything about this world. Nor what lies beyond it. My name is not C. It's Vincent. I... I know who you are, Vincent. You're no loser god. I think you're wonderful. I want to reach out to him, but there's no strength in my body. My eyelids become incredibly heavy. I'm scared. Ah! Oracle! The mind library is destroyed. Ugh! It's turned so visceral. Frey is here. Frey! I want to put an end to all trials. I want to save C from the world. I want to save Henri from herself. I knew you would say that. You still want to become a tragic hero for everyone's sake, right? A boy who, who put himself above all the living things. A girl who loathed herself so much she raised her self-confidence at your cost. All your imaginary friends. Your father who abandoned you long ago. Your mother who never comes to visit. Ah, that explains it. You loved them all, didn't you? Even though I was always there for you, you chose all of them over me in the end. You said it yourself, Frey. You are a product of my own mind born from the remnants of the Oracle. You're a manifestation of all my destructive impulses. Essentially, you are me. I am thou, Thart I. I couldn't love myself, Frey. Oh, Charlotte. I love you. I couldn't love us. So pitiful, aren't we? Now then, come here. Let us repaint the world in your colors. Consume me whole. I take a step forward. When I wake up, it's quiet. Vincent is lying on the operation table. It's quiet in the hall. Um, 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 um. Why is it so quiet? 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 My words echo throughout the room with an orchestra of voices. The one saying them isn't just me. It's the whole school. The one who stands out among the crowd is a man, dressed in pitch black clothes. He's laughing. Well, well, what do we have here? Say, what wish did you make under a shooting star? An ear-deafening orchestra of voices follows. I wished for all the painful things to end. I wished for all the painful things to end. I wished for all the painful things to end. I wished for everyone's happiness. Just that. What a foolish wish. However, it did come true nevertheless. As long as human ego exists, people will always hurt each other. The only way to bring it to an end is to achieve ultimate control over each and every person. Voila! There you have it. You selfishly ate each and every ego in the world. Now you're the only one left. Congratulations, my dear. You've become the oracle of this world. No way! Everyone is gone. Vincent, Henri too. Yes, their bodies are now vessels for you. Ah, uh, you erased everyone's souls. Not only did you consume their soul data, but also the spare copies of it. Unfortunately, they're now gone from this world. Say, Umbrella Man, can I ask you for one last favor? Yes, what is it? Can you kill me? All I do is keep hurting others. If I disappear, the world will surely be a happier place. It won't be a happier place because there's nothing left in it. 
Someone like you who disregards life itself wouldn't hesitate to do it. So, please, somehow. All right. I close my eyes. It's for the best this way. No one will get hurt because of me anymore. Instead of sharp pain, I suddenly feel warm. Hug! Why? You've done well, dear child. All this time you didn't want to be alone, did you? I... Listen well. I will grant your wish. Usually, it comes with a price, but my employer will have already paid in full by now. We will travel across the skies, and you will learn to control your power. Once you do, it is possible that you can rebuild your world from scratch. Let's go stargazing, shall we? Umbrella Man reaches out his hand to me. He looks just like my father from the old wedding photo. Is it really okay for someone like me? Didn't I say it before? It's not about deserving. It's what was destined to happen. Umbrella Man covers me with his coat. So, how about it? I take Umbrella Man's hand. We leave on a journey. I will travel across the seas and skies, wander among roots and ruins of civilizations, watch lives bloom and wither, and be reborn again. Perhaps then I'll learn how to be kind. Perhaps then I'll learn how to be honest. Perhaps then I'll learn how not to hurt others. I want to become a better person, Seth. Thank you for everything you've done for me. You've been a great friend. Thank you for seeing my story through the end. Let's meet again one day. We got more episodes after this, so... We will meet again, Charlotte. <sighs> All of these endings are so sad. And the accompanying music is so sad, too. So, it appears we have reached the end of the story. Umbrella Man, no matter what, Charlotte Wiltshire was doomed from the start. You see, my friend, you've committed a sin, me, of worshipping false gods, that is. Excuse me? Say, are you satisfied with such an ending? Or do you want to see the child's story end in another way? You know, I have the power to grant your wish. Oh, hell, it's a deal with the devil! You may call me mercantile, but by this time you should have learned that nothing in this world comes without a price. And the price would be... Your name. Say, will you give up on your identity for mere possibility? You mean the name of Seth? Have. Of... Will you give up on your existence? When I eat your name, you will no longer be the wise, kind-hearted Seth, because the child won't remember you. She always perceived you as her friend, when in fact, you're just malware that infected our world. <laughs> I did my best to introduce you as something trivial, when in fact, you're not meant to be here. You see, there are no other puppeteers in this world. Another lie. Every single word you've ever uttered was given to you by the child. You're just her imaginary friend. However, if you accept my help, she will no longer be aware of your presence and no longer talk to you. For that price, you will be able to save her. So, what do you think? No! I'm getting Half-Life flashbacks. I think you're really the G-Man. Um, Charles. Umbrella Man. Huh. <sighs> what will happen after this? I mean, like Charlotte said, or something along those lines, just think everyone deserves a chance at a happy ending. Charlotte, too. I may not know what's real or what's not. It's hard to say. Might as well go ahead and get my final thoughts about this game. This, I mean, it's a tragic story. 
I love the art, as usual, and the music fits for the most most part. I mean, I can't get over that psychedelic sequence, like a one big, big-lipped alligator moment right there, but... The socialization system, I mean... It's a good, it's a nice concept, I mean... Socializing, uh... Well, and battling... The only downside is that it kind of amounts to nothing. I mean, you may get a chance at some bonus artwork, but... I mean, it doesn't amount to anything in the grand scheme of things, so it could have done without that feature. And, uh, not as many stupid ways to die, I've noticed. I don't know how to feel about that. I do, uh, I mean, I like all the characters. I mean, kind of Henri included in a certain sense. I mean, her maybe having feelings for Charlotte, but also bullying her. Like, hard to make sense out of her. And I can't help but adore Charlotte. And all the craziness that's happened, weird or not. I mean, there are two more games after this. So I gotta wonder what's gonna happen after that. So, in the meantime... Charles... Umbrella Man, G-Man, Devil, whoever you are. Well, isn't that wonderful? Come, stand under my umbrella. Don't make me think back to that song! Figuratively, of course. Goodbye, Seth the Goody Two-Shoes. Hello, Anonymous. I'll see you soon. And that's it. Be moving on to the next game in the series. See what's going to come out of all this. But until then, thank you for watching Let's Play Hello Charlotte Episode 2, Requiem Adernamdeo. Till the next Let's Play, this is Nazo, signing off.